Hello everyone, welcome back to the weekly meditation challenge where we are going through the mind training slogans of Atisha. And we are at the 10th slogan this week, uh, which is begin the sequence of sending and taking with yourself. Sending and taking, you might have recalled from a previous videos, um, is Tonglen practice. The practice of actually breathing in the suffering of others and then offering whatever we have, whatever we can muster in terms of our own health, happiness, calm, success, whatever it might be, is the general aspiration that we would um, try to be of benefit to others. But as Atisha points out, we also have to take care of ourselves, And it's not always easy to look at some of the ways that we suffer, some of our own discontent. So the birth of empathy, empathy here really comes from an awareness of our own suffering i.e. we become more familiar with how we suffer through our own meditation, the ways that we get hooked by passion and anger and prejudice and all these sorts of things. And the more we start to recognize that in ourselves, A, the less hooked we get by ourselves, but B, the more we start to actually notice how this plays out in others. We're at work and all of a sudden someone snaps at us and we might want to take it very personally, but we start to think, wait, that person is just hooked by anger. I know what it's like to be hooked by anger. And then our heart almost goes out to them in that moment because we realize that they're in pain. So we actually have to start with ourself, um, both in terms of taking care of ourselves, but the way that we actually enter the place of compassion and empathy for others is through looking at our own discontent, our own suffering our own physical pain, our emotional content, being able to actually stay with our fears, with our habitual thought patterns, to acknowledge it. So when we meditate, we don't squash those things down. We openly acknowledge that they've come up. And then we come back to whatever is right in front of us, often the breath in our meditation practice. So what does this particular slogan mean? We could actually begin the sequence of sending and taking with ourselves by doing Tonglin for ourselves, we breathe in our suffering and breathe out whatever kindness, peace, etc. that we can and do that particular practice for ourselves. Another version of this is actually doing loving kindness practice for ourselves. So we could begin by connecting to the breath as the object of our meditation, the natural cycle of our breathing, in breath, out breath, and connecting with that and then going through traditional loving-kindness sayings. For example, may I be filled with loving-kindness. May I be safe from inner and outer dangers. May I be well in body and mind. May I be at ease and happy. Now there are different translations of these particular things, but I think those are quite nice. Um, the idea that we would be filled with um, kindness and love for ourselves, and then we can offer that more fully to others. The idea that we would be safe from inner dangers, like our own like stuck emotional content, not getting so hooked by the anger and passion and prejudice that comes up. And outer dangers, just not getting, you know, swept up into some of the aggression that surrounds us, or the speed, or the chaos. May I be well in body and mind. May I actually physically feel well in my body, and may I feel healthy in my mind as well. And may I be at ease. May I actually be able to relax and be happy. So these are simple aspirations for ourselves. But we could contemplate this, actually contemplate loving kindness terms for ourselves. May I be filled with loving kindness. May I be safe from inner and outer dangers. May I be well in body and mind. May I be at ease and happy. And as we do this, as we continue to contemplate these phrases, saying them over and over again to ourselves, we could visualize ourselves as well. We could actually think of ourselves as we are now, what we normally wear, where we eat our breakfast or have our morning coffee, some sort of version of ourself that is every day. And if that's difficult and you have a hard time wishing yourself this loving kindness, you could also visualize yourself as a child, as you once were when it was a little bit more of an innocent time, perhaps. So whichever version you prefer. And also, I want to mention, you could use these traditional words, these traditional terms and translations of the loving-kindness practice, 
but you could also use your own. I often work with, may I enjoy happiness and be free from suffering. May someone else enjoy happiness and be free from suffering. These are some of the ways that I go through loving kindness. But you should also do something that you personally connect to, so that you actually begin this process of compassion by having compassion for yourself. Having done a little bit of this practice, focusing on these words, contemplating what they mean, we then drop the words and let the feeling of the practice actually permeate your mind and body. What does it feel like afterwards? Can you actually feel that sense of love and kindness? So you could do this practice, and this practice, not unlike Tonglin, is a little advanced. So I wanted to make our challenge something very uh, much that anyone can do. So the challenge this week is, when you get up from your regular meditation practice, whether it is shamatha, calm abiding meditation, resting with the breath, or loving kindness, or if you're feeling um, particularly moved, the Tonglin practice that we've been working with these last few weeks, the challenge is that as you emerge from your practice, do one thing to take care of yourself, an actual activity. It could be just making sure that you don't immediately reach for your phone and get on your email, but you allow some space after the practice to um, just transition normally into the rest of your life. It could be drinking a glass of water and making sure that you're hydrated. It could be taking a nap. There's any number of things that we could do as we emerge from our practice to take care of ourselves. So do one thing every day as you leave your meditation practice that is actually an act of self-care and compassion for yourself. So thank you so much, and I look forward to hearing what creative ideas you come up with um, and connecting to you on the Facebook group. Take care.